The Trail of Allegiance is an expansion for Hearts of Iron 4. Is it any good? Well, Steam says no, no, Bruh. mostly negative. And even when you do a little bit of reading of the reviews, some of the positive ones are actually kind of negative. We got a focus sheet for Uruguay instead of the German rework. I can't believe the Chile got a focus sheet before the filthy Austrians. It's not bad, but it probably isn't worth $15. So today I'm going to give you the one-on-one -on -one of Trail of Allegiance and let you know should you buy it, what's it included, and what is my real take on this. Summarize some of the negative reviews. Uh, Paradox earned to Intern's first mod. I'm not even sure this is even true. I believe it was outsourced to a new team. Maybe that's what they're referring to. You don't pay for this DLC adds so little for such an expensive DLC. The focus tree are poorly made and lack any creativity and thought. Also adds three focus trees. Paradox models are more creative than Paradox developers. We'll touch on that as well. I'm going to talk about a little bit of modding and see if this is a mod DLC. Because I think that's an interesting point that needs to be talked about. Mod definitely is not worth £12.79. Like the previous DLC, it doesn't add any new features to the game, rather just simply to add new focus trees. Yada yada. We get the idea. So it seems the biggest contention is it's not worth the money. It doesn't include features. It just includes national focuses that can be kind of added on with mods. So I've kind of already got this content to the game, and I'm just adding official paradox national focuses when I could have got these through, let's say, Road to 56. Or oh, there are definitely other specialty mods. I can remember there was a dedicated Brazil one and a dedicated Argentina one. Maybe you guys can find that on the workshop and link it below. And this final one, boring as love hearts. I think this might be an emoji that's been changed. Overpriced for the amount of content that you get and is not fully completed. So let's hop into the game and talk about what Trail of Allegiance includes. Single player, new game 936. And let's have a look at South America, specifically South South America. So this was kind of like sold to us as the South American expansion, which is kind of true. It is featuring South America, but I always say, and I've said this a few times, it's South South America, meaning the main focuses are Brazil, Argentina, and Chile with two minor focus trees of Paraguay and Uruguay. So as you can see, it is South, South America. And then maybe in the future, we'd get a North, South America. Does that make sense? There is one other, however, there's a two extra bits in here that are focus trees for things outside of those five new national focus nations. For instance, Peru has the ability now to form the Peru-Bolivian Commonwealth, which is a unified nation-state, a formable of those two nations. Bolivia also has this one, the toll of the war and the end of the national regression, which is very similar to Paraguay, I believe. But it doesn't have a national focus. It is just a generic one. But you can see that this nation has had some flavor added to it. Plus, there is a war as well between Peru and Ecuador. So it's a boundary dispute of this specific state, this part of the Amazon that Peru has claims to. And then you can escalate this into a full-blown war, which it does become a war in 1940 or 1941. And then finally, Venezuela has something slightly new as well. It has the blockade. So as you notice, Venezuela has a lot of oil, a lot of oil. And the Axis will definitely want some of that oil when the war starts kicking off and the wars and the production goes up massively. And a lot of the time, you do see the Axis trading with Venezuela. Now you have a way of blockading Venezuela. I'll be fair, when it comes down to a feature perspective, this is the only one that feels like completely different. I don't think there's been a focus tree or a focus amount or a national spirit that's behaved in this manner. So I wonder if this is some of a back-end feature. Modders in the comments, let us me know if this is a brand new thing or whether it's just something that was already part of the modding tools. So let's quickly rank these national focuses that added. So, so not only is about the national focuses, because anyone can make a national focus tree, the modding tools are in the game, you could do that. But are these mo actual focus trees any good? And that's always going to be the big question because there's definitely an expectation when a DLC gets released release from Paradox that it is going to be more better quality than it is then released by modders. And I think when a, a mod crashes in Hoi 4, we kind of just like, yeah, we understand. This is a mod that we downloaded for free. It's frustrating that it crashes, but we kind of understand that it was just developed by some little guy in his bedroom. But then when we, we pay $15 for an expansion, we have an expectation that that mod is going to be, well, that national focus, that DLC where I slipped up there, uh, is going to be a little bit more uh, stable. So let's give this a tier list treatment. And here we have a very narrow, smaller tier list. 
so we can just summarize these nice and quickly let's start off with brazil play brazil like three or four times i would say this is the main national focus for this expansion the reason why i say that is because this is the one that i believe has the biggest audience that plays hoy in south america you've got the option for a communist path i think you have a democratic path here then you have the uh a monarchist path and then you also have the historical path which is kind of an online one that eventually joins the allies and then you also have the fascist path as well so there's lots of flavor of different options available to you they all share this military path these are all mutually the same and some of the bonuses here are eye-wateringly strong like this one extra 10 percent defense and 10 5 percent attack that's insane and this one too, brown war expert getting you attack bonuses and movement speed over rivers. Some of these are insane. I, I did complain in the olden days. This is my number one talking point. That sometimes when you gain them focus as a part of a focus tree, some of the bonuses feel so lukewarm that I'm like, well, I'm just not going to select a focus or I'll select maybe a continuous focus down here because the focus I want to go for don't really give me that much. So it's not worth 70 days and 70 political power to waste it. So I'll just sit on whatever, but uh, whatever continuous focus. So the good news is the focuses give worthwhile rewards that are actually worth my time, which is awesome, especially when it comes down to military focuses. But the only issue sometimes is when you give really awesome bonuses to minor nations like the South American ones, ones that didn't play a, a massive role in World War II. They were involved in World War II. I know you guys are going to comment that. They were involved, but they weren't involved in the same weather as Germany or the Soviet Union or France or the UK or the United States. And when they could become potentially stronger than these major nations, it makes me wonder sometimes, like, is that a good balance? Is that good balance? Or is that potentially a fatal flaw? Hmm. To summarize the bottom of the focus tree, it splits off at the very end and gives you kind of more of an end game focus where he talks about the United States of uh, South America, which is a democratic way of forming a big South America, which I like it's got flavor because that's a little bit different. And I also like the fact that you can do it without war. Uh, Hoy Forest War Game, I know. But sometimes it's nice to just to do something a little bit differently and unexpected, so that's kind of cute. And then there's the same way of coring the entire of South America by the, the America du Sol, which is in Spanish. But the United States of South America is in English. I've always been confused by the localizations of languages in Holy Four. Like sometimes they want to make it sound fancy, like like the Italian Civil War by giving them localized names. But then at the start of the game, it's Republican Italy and Kingdom of Italy. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden it becomes I don't know something in Italian when the Civil War kicks off. I don't know. I always think it makes me feel a bit weird that like I don't know. I feel like there should be some standardization going on there. Like either use the localized names or the English names. You know? It feels like it's a mix, a bit of a mix of both. Overall, the Brazilian tree is really good. The only mechanic with it that I feel like doesn't sit very well with me is this. Can you see these? It's very small. These neglected state modifiers. And the way you get rid of these is you get rid of them by going for the industrial branch. And if you look really closely, you can see neglected state, growing state, uh, adds construction speed, local factories, for instance. It's the same with the north. You have a bandit problem, which very works very similar to Mexico. There's another nation that has like an issue with bandits and you have to resolve it by moving divisions to a different location. I can't even remember what nation that even is. Someone in the comments is going to tell me. But anyway, it works a bit like that. You spend command power, which I think is really cool, by the way, using an unused resource, which is command power, which is really, really cool. And then you can get rid of the bandits in the north with these state modifiers. Now, the issue I've got with these state modifiers is there's no way of seeing them across your nation at a glance. So is there a map mode for it? No, but there really should be. So right now, the only way of finding out about state modifiers is to basically just hover over them one by one. And I don't feel like it's the best way of displaying these modifiers. So you can see here, the bandits are here. And it's also a neglected state. This one has bandits, but it's not neglected. This one has bandits, but it's not neglected. But this small one here is neglected and has bandits too. The point I'm getting at here is if you were to build in these regions, you would suffer from an overwhelmingly huge construction malice. Yeah, look at this. It's neglected state minus 40% and bandits in the state minus 10%. I like these mechanics on a state basis, by the way. I'm not dissing that. But what I'm saying is there's just not an easy overview of knowing what states have problems and which ones don't. So you have to manually click on each of them and hover over them one by one to know if they're actually having problems or not. And that's the issue that I've got. In a perfect world, my suggestion would be if you go on the states map mode or specifically a state modifier map mode, you click on it and it basically shows the icons over the screen to show 
neglected state or bandits operating in these states like little icons that hover over the top of the countries for instance to so gives you an idea is if there's something i want to build into because one issue you could run into as brazil just not be aware of it it's just build into all these neglected regions and you play in the whole game and you realize oh hang on a second i've got a problem in these states and i wasn't even aware of it I think it just lacks a little bit of quality of life. Once again, I'll repeat, I'm not against these state modifiers. I think they're a cool mechanic, specifically there's certain regions, uh, but the issue I've got is you can't visibly see them to actually react to them appropriately. There just needs to be a little bit more visual UI to show you which areas have them or not. Which moves on to my next problem with Brazil Focus Tree. Because these states are neglected, you tend to neglect them more. So for instance, this state is neglected and I'm going to neglect it more now because I'm basically going to have a construction penalty when building in that said region, which kind of makes the problem even worse. It kind of feels like it needs to work in a system where you invest buildings into this region and therefore it no longer becomes neglected because that's how you think it would work, wouldn't it? If you're investing infrastructure in a region, so it's no longer neglected, right? But no, the only reason they're getting rid of, ne rid of neglected is this industrial tree. So if you put neglect, said you can actually see all of them they're all here these ones that are highlighted so this one removes the resource penalty this one fixes the construction of the factories this one fixes the construction of the factories another one this one fixes construction and factories three four of those and this one also fixes construction and factories and max states and also local resources so the only way you can completely get rid of all those penalties is if you go for all five of these they're all spread out too and actually they're all put together as well so you, you kind of visibly can see on the focus tree which one of these you're getting you're fixing your neglected state with and there is also a very final one which actually gives you a bonus so if you get rid of completely neglected state and then you get flourishing economy with the financial stimulation which cause gives you more political power it gives you additional bonuses of construction max factories and local resources which results in the exact opposite these states that were neglected now actually have a booming economy which gives you additional bonuses anyway back to my original point these states that are neglected you have no incentivized to build in them until you've got rid of the neglected state so you tend to neglect them even more i also think this is an issue where the country is just completely falling apart in every single way shape and form so you've got your main primary resources of political power and stability they usually is structured around the government you go weak government and then your first objective is to fix that government so therefore you can get more political power then you've got state of emergency which is almost like a, an ideological one for communism and giving losing stability then you've got a bust economy meaning your production output is rubbish then you've got another one for separatist sentiments which loses stability and war support and then you finally you're basically unable to make a navy unless you invest into your naval focus path I, I think the issue that i've got is i feel like brazil has too many issues i think if i was to design a focus tree which i might do one day i don't know there might be a modding adventure by feedback gaming one day i would only have two issues with a nation that has to be fixed i know that might not be fully historical but once again we're playing a computer game and we're leaning more towards fun and gameplay than it is towards creating a, a real reenactment of history and i would prefer it if you were to focus on two key elements of why brazil is backwards and why you can fix those set elements i suppose if you tie it one two three four five issues and also six with the bandits and also seven with neglected states brazil has seven issues to fix at the start of the game I don't know about you, but I feel like that's slightly overwhelming to the player. Like you start with a nation that's basically bad and bruised in every single way possible. Once again, I'm starting to nitpick a little bit now. But what I'm trying to say is that if there's a nation that needs to be fixed, which is fun to fix it, by the way, I'm not against the mechanic. It just feels like it maybe should limit the amount of things that need to be fixed to not be an overwhelming experience for the player, particularly when you've got state modifiers atop that off as well when it comes down to the actual focus tree itself getting rid of neglected states is actually pretty fun i know i've bashed on about it ages ago but no actually i really do enjoy getting rid of it it's actually fun to build up the state and play tall as brazil uh, unifying brazil is super fun as well by coring all of uh, south america as well the war goals at the bottom of the focus tree are really really cool as well the ability to declare war early on particularly if you're not aligned or democratic is really awesome and the rewards you get from the focus tree are all really spicy as well there's nothing more underwhelming than going for a 70 day focus and you gain, I don't know, one infrastructure or something, you know, it's nice that the focuses actually do give you worthwhile bonuses that are actually worth your time. Once again, a little bit of a mixed bag for me here, but overall, Brazil, what do I think of it? I'm going to give Brazil from S to C, I'm going to a B tier. Once again, I think there's too many issues going on. It's a little bit overwhelming to players. The neglected state modifiers is a bit overwhelming. However, some of the mechanics baked into the focus tree are actually quite fun. Next up, 
Hi, welcome to Chili's. Chili, which allows you to kind of bring back the natives of Chile and go for kind of like an Incan empire and try and liberate all of the Americas, which is just an unbelievably cool idea. Credit to the devs for that one, because it's just it's something I would have never thought of. However, the economy is bust. You have no navy, and you will get no navy until you fix that. You have the Republican Guard, which is surprisingly a bonus, which is something you don't usually see, but it's kind of cool. Near anarchic society. So once again, things are bust right now. And surprisingly, it's giving you fascism for anarchy. Interesting. We also had a, a thing where our army was really great, getting extra recruitable part, but no, sorry, yoink, you've actually had that removed by another focus. Once again, I'm not a big fan of this either. You have one focus that adds it, another focus that removes it, and you've got two national spirits that work against each other. We also have gaining communism. Are we gaining all ideologies here? I think we are. And then finally, the conflict, which was like something that happened in the north here between all these nations, and that's like a legacy of a stain. We have some actual green bonuses, but also some negative ones. Anyway, there's a lot of cool flavor in this focus tree as well. The fact that you start off as a relatively minor power, but you're also a minor plow that can play tall because you've got a lot of resources, adds some cool play styles to it. I think out of the, all the new focuses they've released so far, I think Chile is the one I've played the least, but I've experimented a little bit, and so far, so far, what I've seen does seem pretty good. The coolest thing is the option to build a domestic economy or work on one by exporting, by building resources. I think that is just a, such a cool concept. I think overall, Chile is a mighty fine, hot scotch bonnet. Nice meme, Dave. With that in mind, I'm gonna give it an A tier. Paraguay. Once again, this is what we refer to as a mini focus tree, because as you can see, the amount of focuses politically are more limited. What happens is you have an event that pops up quite early on in 936 that gives you option for a civil war. And you can either join this side, which is kind of like a more dictatorship, or go down more of a communist path on the left side. And for a nation like Paraguay, that only starts off with four factories and no manpower. Paradox really likes to beat a man when he's down. This actually works surprisingly. It's one of those ones, if you become great at Paraguay, you get rid of this modifier. And what it actually is, is monthly population growth. It's one of those like, stats that you don't really see very often. And it just basically means the amount of extra manpower you get over time. But this one is, uh, oof, man, that one is very painful. But it will remove itself automatically by November 939. That's interesting. I like the paradox of thought about that. It's like, well, what if this nation never gets rid of this and never really becomes great at Paraguay? Well, in that case, you can get rid of it just slowly over time anyway, which is really cool. The same applies for this one, the aftershock of the Triple Alliance. I want to be honest with you. For a mini focus tree, it's actually pretty cool. But I will say, this is a biggie for me, this. It does have the feeling of it being kind of a mod. I feel like when people design the first focus trees, they try and make them relatively linear and simplistic and just about developing the nation. But when you get a big focus tree from Paradox, it tends to be one with lots of decisions to be made and, and strategy involving what decisions you make. Because it's quite linear, it gives you that mod kind of feel to it. Anyway, Paraguay, boom. You're not that guy, pal, trust me. You're not that guy. Uruguay. I played a little bit of this one too. I found this one a little bit less interesting because of obviously the history behind Uruguay is not as, I guess, flavorful. There's a really interesting thing with uh, when you're laissez-faire, laissez-faire, you have the ability to gain a factory automatically over time by like the capitalists in the nation building within the nation. Once again, super simplistic, straightforward. It's a bit of a mixed bag, but Uruguay, boom. We're going to give you a B tier just for a lack of flavor and being a more basic focus tree. Argentina. Now, this is the main event because everyone talked about with Argentina how it's going to be the exiles for the Germans if the Third Reich fails, right? And that's exactly what they include in the game. It's really difficult to do at the moment, but Germany has to cap while it's fascist. Then you've got to have selected this focus, the Guardia Nationale. This focus has to be completed and Germany has to cap. And to get those two to sync up perfectly is very difficult because the quickest you can flip to fascism is about n the end of 1937. And that's not fast enough if they oppose Hitler. You not be, you'll not be able to get the event. I believe the community is still working on that. And apparently Paradox are aware of it as well. And with that in mind, Paradox are working on ways of making it more accessible because it is an achievement. It's, it's funny when, when Paradox make it an achievement... It becomes super official, doesn't it? This one is going to be probably more accessible as time goes on. Put it that way. Well, anyway, aside from that, the fascist path, if you go down this side, is really interesting with 20% extra attack 
from your entire nation. I, I just, I don't even know how this made it into the game. I like that it exists. Hey, I like that it exists. I like that the giving is lovely bonuses. That's really nice. But my goodness, 20%. That's an insane Argentina. That's insane. And then once again, all the paths and the bonuses you get down here are absolutely insane. Followed up by attacking Paraguay, attacking Chile, and then forming a South American unity, which allows you to call the entirety of the continent. I will say one thing though. I feel like it's relatively too easy to call the entire continent. I feel like it would make a little bit more sense if it required like 20% compliance before you can call. But the minute you just press a button, spend 20 political power or whatever it is, and it takes a, like a month and boom, there you go. No resistance, all the manpower, all the factories, all the resources. I guess there's just a little party in the back of my head that says, man, it's a little bit too easy. There's also a little bit of flavor here about the Argentine Falcon Islands or the British Falcon Islands. Oh, it depends on the way you look at it. And uh, it's an interesting mechanic where if you occupy the islands for a set number of time, you, uh, you have the ability to wipe peace out Britain and just take the islands off them. Once again, I like that it exists. I like that it's a thing. However, I think it's one of those moments where the payoff is just not as spicy as it needs to be. So just to give you the, the, the idea behind it, you go for this focus. It gives you a war goal against Brent. You declare war on Brent. You then occupy Falcons and the South Georgia Islands. And if you occupy them for, I believe, six months, you have a decision that you can press. You'll, you'll keep the islands. However, you wipe peace out Britain. Well, is this even possible? That is the big question, isn't it? Because if to get this far down the focus tree, we're hitting 1939, 1938. So I suppose the only way you could do this, you'd have to massively rush each focus to turn fascist, then get to here. And I bet you, you just touch in 1939 if you've super rushed it. And then it makes me question if the United Kingdom, France are in alliance together, whether they're going to allow you to even do this, or is he even capable of doing this? I don't know. It's a good question. I also feel like, to achieve this goal, which is quite miraculous, to gain two islands that have nothing on them. I mean, no resources, no factories. Argentina, why do you want these islands so badly? Anyway, to get them and go through all the effort of getting them, I feel like you need to have like some kind of vendor fires that says something like victory parade that gives you like 50 stability or something. Something to make it worth your while. Because <laughs> at the moment, you're just gaining two crappy islands that have nothing on them. Argentina, why do you want them so badly? In short, every time I played Argentina, everything I've had on these focus trees has been amazing. All the focuses feel really fun. There's lots of options. Uh, getting rid of uh, the national spirits is relatively easy. It's just the political problem. And then there's the infamous decade, which aren't even that bad when it comes down to the overall issues with the nation as a whole. So overall, for the most part, uh, Argentina plays really well and you don't feel like at the very start of the game, everything's broken. And you don't have issues with state modifiers too. You've got access to a lot of resources if you invade Chile as well. God, I love Argentina so much. Argentina is really, really great. Uh, honestly, it tip tops the lot. I know what you guys are going to say here. You're going to say, these are minor focus trees. How did they even make it to the tier list? Surely this should be ranked since considerably lower. I'm going to treat it as it is. If it's a dog, I'm going to call it a dog. And as it stands right now, these minor focus trees, even though they are smaller, are worth a grading system and are kind of worthwhile my time. Okay, let's hit the harder topic now. Let's talk about, is this a mod or is this worth a paid DLC? I was a very strong hater of the Battle for the Bosporus expansion. I felt like the Greek, uh, Bulgarian, and Turkish focus trees were overly complex. And I felt like they could have been simplified to make them more accessible and kind of make them more fun. But on hindsight, the features they added as a part of this expansion were just things that could have been modded into the game. There was an element that made you feel like there weren't mods because they had stuff like this. Can you see this? Like, I hated this at the time. I used to detest it, but it's, it's the spreadsheets like showing popularity of parties and loyalty of parties. And Greece has one as well. Yeah, hey, look at this lovely spreadsheet. <laughs> Who doesn't love spreadsheets, right? And then Turkey's got the added problem, which I don't think it has a spreadsheet. It has an issue where it's got like the competing factions within the nation, and it just doesn't visually show the three pieces of Turkey split into three. They're the Kemalists, the traditionalists, and the Kurds, you know? Once again, it's one of those elements of kind of like quality of life where I feel like it doesn't visually show the issues with that nation in a nice straightforward way. But because of those little spreadsheets that you got as part of Battle of the Bosporus, there was a kind of a feeling that you were getting more for your money because it felt like 
it felt like these were full-blown features. Now, suppose Palace Focus Tree had lots of coring elements. It had Byzantine, it had the Byzantines in it as well. It had Turkey and the Ottoman Empire. So there was a lot of spice and a lot of like alt history flavor that a lot of people really did enjoy as part of Battle of the Bosphorus. But the number one complaint is people said this was modding content. So it comes to South America and what do we conclude? Yeah, I think a lot of the stuff that is in this expansion is stuff that could have been modded in by the community. And I can't help but feel that if you are a big component of Road to 56, I can't but feel that when you're going to play these nations, they're going to feel incredibly similar to nations you've already paid as a free mod. Comment below, guys. Let me know if there are any features as a part of this expansion that aren't moddable and aren't, you can't mod in yourself. This one's left me mixed because I do think... There are some exceptional mods out there that do mod these countries that you can get for free. It's, it's hard situation for Paradox because they add these amazing modding features that give you the ability to create these amazing national focus trees. However, if they were to release them using those same modding tools, you can't but feel like, well, hang on a minute, I can't, I've got this kind of content for free as a part of the base game. So I kind of feel like it's not really worth $10, $15, is it? I think this DLC misses the mark. And I think if they added one feature just one feature, something diplomatic some way, something that has an integrated feature of diplomacy of some way, shape and form. I feel like it would be worth the money. And do you know what I think it would have been if they reworked something in Europe? Oh, that's a biggie, isn't it? Now, they're probably saving this for some other expansion that could be coming out. But I have noticed the community is becoming more and more vocal about reworking Germany or, the, or Japan, for instance. I know the community is becoming very loud about that especially with how amazing the Italian focus tree is and how unbelievably basic the German, the Japanese one is. So if I could sit down with a Paradox person, that'd be kind of like, this, these uh, country packs are really cool, but you need to like select a random nation in Europe to update radically as well. And then people will kind of feel like they're getting a little bit more or more for their money. Or alternatively, one feature, maybe even a minor feature of some kind, shape or form. Maybe if they'd included the armored car mechanized designer, as a part of the expansion people wouldn't feel as like well i've not got a full-blown feature i'm not missing out on a full-blown feature now guys i'm gonna sit in the middle here this is this is a, a difficult one for me to call i feel like this expansion is great for you if you're a brazilian or argentinian and you want to play those nations and feel like uh, they actually have full-blown focus trees and they can actually have a meaningful impact on the game awesome and they have amazing bonuses too so you can actually feel like you can compete with the rest of the world which is one of the issues you find when you play mining nations you always feel like you're always catching up which is kind of really annoying especially when you you can never potentially catch up if you're playing a small nation like i don't know belgium for instance however if you don't play any nations in south america i think you can give this expansion a big hard pass i'm gonna give this one guys directly in the middle a five out of ten i'm gonna be a fence sitter once again if you are a south american boy i'm gonna think you're gonna love this and i think if you've got a taste for national focuses that are done in quite a creative way it probably will be updated in the future with some more patches and changes and tweaks i think you're gonna enjoy this however if you are hungry for world war ii which is mostly european centric and a little bit of asian centric i don't think you're gonna get a lot from this expansion so i think that's a straight up no for you ah oh, feedback i hate this guy he's such a fencer make a decision that is my final score five out of ten guys if you want more of this kind of content don't forget to like and to subscribe and if you want more content there's a video right here so give this one a click this one